It's when you're sharing an experience like that with other people that it just sort of intensifies the whole thing. Because one thing is doing it alone, but when you've actually got other people involved as well, it just, yeah, it just makes it bigger. Should we do a new take? Ready? I'm Henrietta Album. I'm a trail runner from Norway. And I'm here to attempt the Bob Graham round. The Bob Graham round is a route in the uh, British Shells of the Lake District where you take in 42 tops, starting and finishing at the Moot Hall in Keswick. It dates back to 1932 when Bob Graham, on his 42nd birthday, decided to set a new 24-hour record in the lakes and essentially take in as many peaks as his age. I'm here to, to, to try my luck and see if I can also do it. With a twist though, because uh, I'm doing it in midwinter conditions, which adds a whole other dimension. This year, around the 18th of December, was sort of the first day you could do a midwinter Bob Graham. And then you got a window till around 10th of January. But yeah, a midwinter round is essentially a Bob Graham round in crap conditions. <laughs> So when I came over for the recce, I met up with uh, this um, legend, really, who's done a unsupported winter round in the 1980s. Um, he's got loads of experience. He knows a lot of people here. And we chatted about the round, and he offered to help me organize the logistics of it all and uh, make sure that I've got enough paces. Yeah, I think he went to the right here. I went down here. Back in the day, we would definitely have come down there and gone up there, but that seems to have become so much better a route down there It's now. actually quite the path, though. Yeah, it is. There. A major part of the Bob Graham is actually that you have to have a witness on each of the 42 peaks. So uh, traditionally, you would run with other people as you're doing it. So he's been super valuable to me, and we've got a stellar group of um, people lined up who will be running the, the round with me. There's definitely a thing with Bob Graham about even when the absolute top person comes with keeping it under the radar mm. because otherwise they don't get an authentic experience like mm. people would have had years ago. Best memories I have is from uh, like trips or adventures that I've decided to do on my own initiative yeah. rather than I'm going to go do a race. Mm. Uh, because the whole experience, you know, looking back at my recce that I came and did, I've already got so many good memories from that weekend. When, when you said what you were going to recce, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work out, because <laughs> the weather was so shit. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. And then when you said, well, I haven't done this, and then I said, well, you could just bolt that in. And when you did it, I thought, my God, <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> I sort of learnt about the Bob Graham several years ago. I think the more I've looked into it, the more I've realised how gruelling and tough it's going to be. On top of that, 
It does get technical, especially after sort of the six, seven hour mark. And, you know, living in the Rumstalen of Norway, uh, we have a lot of really rough technical trails. From that aspect as well, I do think the route will suit me. I'm saying all this now, but <laughs> come tomorrow, I'm just going to be like massively regretting it. Although a lot of the paces are at the moment sort of strangers to me, we are all runners on some sort of weird level. I think we all have a mutual understanding of, of what's going on and why we're doing this. And, and that in a sense does also sort of bring us together even, even though we don't know each other. The reason why I go out into nature and seek out challenges like this, it forces you to be in that moment and forget about everything else. And being in a moment like that, focusing on just putting one foot in front of the other, what's happening right now. And being in a situation like that with another runner, I think instantly you will just like connect and be like, okay, we are actually in this together. Let's get through it the best we can um, and see what happens. Yeah, the first two legs is very much a matter of not screwing it up. <laughs> and the third, fourth and fifth also. <laughs> I had um, John with me on this leg together with uh, Sam, who, yeah, pretty much just walked up at 3 a.m. and said, all right, I'm Sam, let's go. So exciting. <laughs> We start off up Skiddle, which I'd been in the area before, but I hadn't sort of done that entire climb before. And um, yeah, it, it really dragged on, to be honest. <laughs> the conditions were rough, but at this point, you're just so excited about what's to come and what you're doing, and you're finally like doing it because I'd literally been waiting for a very long time to actually start. So at this point you're sort of just forgetting about all the sort of details and you're just like, oh, I'm going, I'm actually doing this now, let's, let's go. So yeah, we descended off Skiddle and then we hit um, Bog Haven essentially. <laughs> Like when it's raining and it's dark and it's foggy <laughs> and you're in bog, it's like it's like wet from every direction. It's two in the morning. That was probably the first point where I thought to myself, wow, this is what it's gonna be like. <laughs> you can do this grassy bit. down from Blencathra, um, we were pretty happy to actually be down. The temperature difference was massive from top to bottom and I was hoping that this weather window would appear and the rain would stop. 
said hello to my new paces for leg two, which was um, Jack and Scott, two really nice guys. A bit windy or cold up there, and uh, yeah, no drama. He was home alone this week, uh, so he thought he'd make the most of it and do a Bob Graham leg one early in the morning on a casual Tuesday. What's the plan now? <laughs> I've got to go to work. doing a winter round you're you're running in like 11 hours of darkness essentially so a big chunk of it is in the dark and you're mainly just staring at the feet in front of you or yeah a couple of meters around you when we actually did sort of switch from night mode to daylight mode instantly you're just sort of looking up and going wow I'm super lucky to even have views on this particular day you really learn to appreciate it as well, I think. And yeah, you just sort of soak it in the moment and, and that in itself just gives you loads of extra motivation and energy, I think. It's surreal, really, how you have this group of people who've essentially said, yeah, we want to we wanna help you realise this adventure that you want to go out and try your best luck at. Um, so, yeah, they were basically said yes. And I, I, it's fascinating how people would get up, get up in the middle of the night just to help me do this thing. Um, so it's very unique and it's very special and I feel super privileged to have everyone involved because uh, I'm just someone who likes to run in the mountains really and yeah I'm not really sure whether I'll manage to even get around it's a super daunting challenge it's the hardest thing I'll ever well attempt in my life I think <laughs> um, but yeah all these people are here to help me do it Coming into Dunmail Pass, the thing I remember the best is actually that cup of tea that Martin handed me. Um, I needed something warm at that point to drink. I'd never had a warm drink in a race or anything like that, so when we chatted beforehand, I was like, yeah, no, I won't need, I won't need a warm drink. But he still had it there ready for me, and it tasted very, very good at that point. Once you've got a 1.1 kilo bag. Oh, who's taking that now? Well, I, can I, I don't know. Saying. I've got loads of room in here. Have you all got enough stuff yourselves? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm you literally really. problem, <laughs> I feel like I'm carrying the kitchen sink, but I'm, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> to, get a prop, to get a proper workout. <laughs> yeah. hey, you really wake me up. up. Picked up my paces for leg three. Uh, three young, like, pre-chatty guys with a lot of energy, with Matt, Tom and Billy. So yeah, we set up um, a really steep climb actually coming up of uh, Dunmail Pass, which your calves are really, really burning at this point.
they're great navigators, they really know this leg, so it was all very smooth. We were just hitting the lines like bang on. And the guys were just, they were chatting constantly from the first minute we set off to, I think, for the entire five hours that that leg took. <laughs> I think lights off. <laughs> I think lights off. How are we feeling? I need a drink after that horrible yeah. But that's about it. it. Not thinking too much. Just going with it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely getting tired though. A big part of me was quite worried if I just like injure myself on the round and that would be it. And I knew this section in particular was super risky from that perspective. So yeah, I was pretty relieved when we coming up to Scarfell Pike, because that sort of marks the end of the more slippery rock section. But then at that point, I was entering unknown territory where I'd never been before, which was the Lord's Rape. It was mind-blowing, it was so cool. It is very much a Lord of the Rings sort of experience in many ways. And we got to sort of traverse across some scree slopes to begin with, and then you sort of drop down a bit before crawling your way up this gully with just moving rocks everywhere. And it's strange because when you get to the top, you're literally in like, you're, you're on the fells again, which is very different to what you, where you just came from. Uh, so this is a real experience when you do come out the other end and you're just like, wow, uh, I'm sort of safe now. <laughs> I think the experience I just had sort of coming from the more interesting part of leg three, which I actually ended up really enjoying, just gave me a massive energy boost. So. The downhill into Wasdale, which is the next changeover again, flew by and I felt like we had a lot of fun there. So yeah, I got into Wasdale, had a cup of tea, 
and uh, met my new paces, which was Nick and Harry, and then John was going to join this leg as well. And I decided up front that I was going to listen to music going up U Barrow, just because I know that a lot of people tend to sort of just crack going up that. Whereas in my head up front, I decided that that's where I get to put music in and just grind, because I love a good climb. <laughs> And I think I probably pushed a bit too hard on that, but I was just feeling great at this point. Uh, so yeah, I just enjoyed that. I was thinking back to my recce with Beth as well, and just thinking back to like, oh, we'd been here on a really rainy day, and now we had this great view of a sunset over Wasdale. Uh, and I was sort of, at this point, starting to realize that there's a chance I might do this. Now, I knew it was going to get dark pretty soon, so I was pretty conscious as well that the faster I can sort of push the pace now, the more I will get done in the daytime. And then it got dark roughly halfway round, and then the wind like really, really picked up. And um, yeah, it picked up so much they almost picked us up. The tracker seems to have stopped, and I'm sure she's further on than Green Gable. In fact, she should be near, getting nearer to Grey Knots by now. Um, but it's just a, it's always a bit disconcerting when you stop seeing a track, and the weather isn't actually very nice up there. Yeah. I'm sure it's okay, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to know where they are. At this point, it was more like, is everyone okay? Because this, this wind is a bit crazy now and we need to make sure we're staying on our legs and not being blown off this ridge. We got down and I think something shifted in me and thought, I just sort of realized how tired I was. Um, and I think, yeah, the darkness as well, it sort of just dawned on me that, okay, there's still many, many hours to go. The weather's crapping out a little bit, and you're pretty tired, actually. <laughs> I think I was pretty grumpy at this point, so I'd like to apologise to my paces. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, and we'll see you at the road. Start yeah. the road. Okay, sounds yeah. good. I had a recce leg five, a lot of people say that it's sort of just once you're there it's going to be a matter of just getting it done. Uh, in my head it was going to be a bit shorter and easier than it was. Alan was pacing me for it, he was trying to shield me from the wind as well which was nice. And uh, yeah, just empty the tank essentially.
having all the paces involved, I had Martin, the road supporters. There were a lot of people sort of cheering for me and helping me do this. And I very much felt like I owed it to them to execute, um, obviously as well as I could, but ideally set a good time as well. Because yeah, it's definitely taken up their time uh, in many ways. It's just awesome to be part of like a Bob Graham round, no matter like what speed, but when someone's trying to go for the record, it's just, yeah, incredible. Um, but yeah, you've helped on quite a few quick ones, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> quick ones actually, yeah. which have happened pretty recently. And uh, yeah, uh, this one was pretty fast as well. Yeah, like I've never yeah. helped on a winter one. And that was just, yeah, that was in incredible. Um, I think she might be coming now. I've ever had. Wow. You guys You're are like, the, you, know, you make me feel you. like a superstar. <laughs> and yeah, like having the paces has been an incredible experience from start to finish. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> What's unique about the Bob Graham round is that it's not just another FKT. Yeah. Oh, you're a star. It's your best day ever. When you're sharing an experience like that with other people, <laughs> it just sort of intensifies the whole thing. Very, very proud. Because one thing is doing it alone, but when you've actually got other people involved as well, it just, yeah, it just makes it bigger. Now the proper one. Fuck! <laughs> 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 Cameraman down! <laughs> oh fuck.